Hey guys, Dennis here. Last time I got this oil burner fired up and learned a few things about how it worked and um, there's one thing that I wasn't sure about and that was this, what turned out to be a valve. And I ended up putting a pair of vice grips on here so I could pull this, what looked to be a reverse threaded brass uh, post here and I could pull it up and that ended up opening the valve so that I could um, make this make fire. So uh, I did some research and come to find out this is this kind of valve it ha has a special hand wheel and you can order replacements and they're actually only a few bucks so that's what I did and it turns out you order these uh, by the temperature rating. If there's a fire or something or this gets too hot the the metal inside here melts and this whole thing pops off and it shuts the valve so it's a safety feature. So what I want to do today is I want to get a base made for this so it's stable and I can move it around a little bit. I also need to cut a hole in this uh, barrel and um, I want to make it adjustable and also removable. So I've got an idea. So let's work. Let's get that done first and then we'll move on to the next part. And through the miracles of modern editing, I can turn this around and voila, we've got a hole cut in our barrel. And we've also got a base for the whole thing to sit on. Now, let's see how this works. 
Okay, so the clever part that I came up with is this piece right here. So this just sits on here and slides back and forth and I can take the whole thing off if I want to. And I've made it so that I still have to drill some holes, but the idea is that the flange on the oil burner will bolt right to this thing. So I think this should work pretty good. Um, this will allow me to kind of adjust the whole thing. Uh. Oh, I'll be able to adjust the whole thing in and out. And just in case I need to be able to um, control where the flame is inside. And also because I was worried about the, top, the end getting too hot if I left it in um, during like a cool down or something. So if I, if I want to, I can just pull the whole thing right out. So the next thing I need is some kind of lid for this whole thing. And I think I'm gonna keep it simple and just cut it out of sheet metal. And I've already drawn a circle here. So I'm just gonna cut this out. It's gonna be a little bit wobbly, I think, and the heat probably won't help. So I'm going to weld some angle iron on the top to kind of brace it. And my idea is to make a hexagon because I think that'd be the most efficient use of material um, to kind of approximate the circular shape. And I just need to do a little bit of math here. So I have my circular piece here that's 22 inches in diameter. So if I overlay a hexagon on the, let's see, do, do, do. I gotta figure out what angle to cut the sides and how long they should be. And now I, I think I remember that a hexagon forms, uh, forms equilateral triangles, which means all the sides are the same. So that's actually really nice. So the radius here is the same as the length of each side. So 22 inches, uh, that's an 11 inch radius. So I need 11 inch sides and equilateral triangles are all 60 degrees. So I need to cut all the pieces at 60 degrees. Okay, so piece of cake. So I should be able to cut all these out and um, weld them up uh, on my welding table. I'll make sure that it's welded all flat and then I can weld it to my lid and then I'm going to, I think I'm going to have maybe some like bars coming across as handles that will just be kind of like little spot welds on a couple of corners. And that'll, that'll keep the heat transfer from the lid to going to the handles um, and then provide more rigidity. So that's the plan. So let's go cut some metal. 60 degrees to the blade. Um, well, trust me, I already adjusted it. All right, so the oil burner's all bolted up to this thing, so it sits there nicely. And um, I can put it on this base here. I put some bolts, I drilled three holes, welded bolts to the bottom of this guy. So even though I can take it off pretty easily, it will be 
It'll be nice and sturdy. It has three points of contact. It's not going to slide off now because the bolts are in the holes. And I've got... Oh, this top, which I think looks pretty sweet, actually. So, next we got to put some insulation in. And for that, I'm using... This stuff's called Kale Wool. Um, that's, the, that's the brand name. I don't know if this is actually Kale Wool but it's a ceramic fiber insulation. So let me grab that. And I do want to mask up for this because ceramic fiber, it's, it's not good if the fibers get in the air and you breathe it. So you do want to have some breathing protection for this. Also, it can be really itchy. So I am going to use these gloves that have gauntlets on them. All right, so here's Here's the fiber. Hope I have enough. Oh yeah, this cuts really easily. So now that I know this fits, I'm gonna do something that um, might be totally unnecessary. But I already have this stuff. This is water glass uh, or sodium silicate. And it's used for a lot of things. You can seal your floors with it, preserve eggs. Uh, it's a cardboard adhesive. So my understanding is that it cures with carbon dioxide and it forms kind of like a, I guess like a glassy kind of material. I bought some for some other experiments and stuff and I never got around to them, but uh, since I came across uh, the idea of using this as like a kind of like kiln glue for for your um, uh, for your insulation, I thought I'd give it a try to see if it would make the wool stick to the walls of this barrel a little bit better. I think really I'm just looking for an excuse to use this stuff because I've had it sitting around for so long. But uh, let's see what happens. All right, so it, it definitely does not paint onto the actual fiber very well. So I'm going to skip that part and just put a very liberal amount in the barrel here. Oh, yeah, actually, uh, this stuff's already sticking to it. Oh, yeah, it's very, very much stuck to the sides of this. So... Um, we'll see what happens in a week or so when this stuff sets up or cures or whatever it's supposed to do. All right, so honestly, I didn't expect that to work as well as it did for the barrel. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to use it to glue the KO wool to the lid that I made. My other thought was that I might drill a bunch of holes and use some like high temperature wire like, um, like Canthal or um, another kind to kind of like make loops to hold the wool to the top here. The other thing is I'm going to have to cover all this stuff with a layer of either Satanite or Mizu, I think it's called. It's, um, they're both kind of like castable refractories or, um, or mortars for high temperature mortars. Because the problem is you don't want exposed ceramic fiber because as it gets fired in the furnace, it will it'll break down and it'll release the kind of fibers that really are not good for you. So, so you want to cover those. Now let's just go for it here. Yeah, so the, um, the thing with this is that once you put it down, <laughs> Apparently, it just sticks, and then it's not very easy to move. Ah, oh, come on.
All right, so unfortunately I'm out of time for today, so this is as far as I'm gonna get, but I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. Um, I think this is a good point to pause too, because the next step is coating this um, kale wool with, like I said, either Satanite or Mizu, and I have both because I've seen references to both of them. So um, I need to do a little bit more research and figure out the best way to do this. I've never actually seen it done. I haven't seen anyone mix this stuff up before. So I need to look up how much water to use with, with the powder. And if you're watching this and you have any tips for me, please let me know. I love comments. Um, I love to hear what you think. I'm not quite sure. I'm not very confident in how it's gonna stick to the wool and how the wool isn't gonna like pull apart um, because this stuff is like layers. Okay, I'm getting kind of long-winded here, but if you have any tips or advice for me or ideas, please leave them in the comments below. I'd, I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, if you just came over to this channel, hit that subscribe button down below. And if you want to be notified of future videos, hit the bell next to it. Just to give you a taste of what's to come, I've got some aluminum wheels here, and I think this thing can melt them. So we're gonna see. I know it fits in there because I measured. But again, if you wanna see how this turns out, hit that subscribe button down below and look for my future videos. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.